May the blessing of the Lord be upon you, New Zion. I bless you in the name of the Lord. We're grateful to God for another beautiful day, beautiful day that he's given us. Listen now for our scriptural call to worship. Shout joyfully to the Lord all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful singing. Know that the Lord himself is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His loving kindness is everlasting. And his faithfulness to all generations. Let's all join in praising God to, today and thanking him for all that he's done. And let's lift our voices now in song. Amen. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. How great is our God? How many of you know he's great? Can you stand with us? And we're going to lift this up this morning. How great is our God? Hallelujah. Woo! Yeah. Sing unto the Lord. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a great big God. He's a great big God. Woo! Yes, he is. One more time. Say how great is our God. Sing with me how great yes. is our God. And all will we'll see. And all will we'll see, see how great. How great. How great. Lord, you are great. He's a great big God. He's a great big God. Hey. Woo. Come on, New Zion, say. Say, I lift my hand. I lift my hand. To give him glory. To give him glory. I lift my hand. I lift my hand. To give him praise. To give him praise. And I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. You say, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Say, I lift my hands, and I give you glory. I don't care how I feel, I lift my hands, because I'm going to give you praise, and I praise you, Lord. Oh, I praise you, Lord. Somebody help me say, yeah, say yes. Oh, Give you glory. God, I gotta honor you with all my praise. And I give you praise. I'll praise you, Lord. Oh, I'll praise you, Lord. We're gonna raise it up. Say yes. Say yes. Oh, I lift my hand. I'm gonna give you glory. Yeah, yeah, God, I lift my hand. Deserve all the praise, and I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord. Oh, help me say yeah, yeah, yeah. 
You deserve it. You deserve it. Hey. And your praise shall continually be in my mouth. Woo. Say your praise shall continually be in my mouth. Can you raise that up? Say. Say your praise shall continually be in my mouth. I will bless the Lord. Yes, yes. Your praise. Your praise. Oh yeah, your praise, your praise it shall continually, continually be in my mouth. 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 Your praise shall continue. Continually be in my mouth. Continually be in my mouth. Continually be in my mouth. Woo! That's all I want to say. Thank. You, yes, say thank you, God. Thank you, yes, thank you. Come on, help me say thank you. I want to thank you for your love. Thank you for your power. Thank you, Lord, yeah, yeah. I want to thank you for your love. Oh, God, thank you for your power. Thank you for protection. You. Oh my God, every hour. Oh yeah, I want to thank you for your love. Thank you. Oh, thank you for your power. Thank you. Oh, thank you for protecting thank me, Jesus. You. Every hour. Oh, woo Continually be in my mouth. Woo! Continually be in my mouth. Continually be in my mouth, God. Your praise shall continually be. Your praise shall continually be. Oh, shall continually be. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great. Oh, Lord. Are you God? And everybody everywhere will see how great. Oh, how great is our God. Yeah, yes. Yes, God. Yes, Jesus. Good morning, New Zion. Now is the time that we share together in our corporate litany. Um, We will be starting as the leader, and you will follow as as the teleprompter goes. Oh, God, you are the creator and sustainer of your church. Yeah, that's me. Renew your church, O oh God. Fan the dying embers, O oh Lord. Give us a new light and a new vision that we may advance your kingdom in our disjoined or disjointed, excuse me, world. Renew your church, oh God. Revive your faith. That the whole world know you to love. In the master's name, amen. Thank you. Oh, 
you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne, for you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. I love, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Worship and adore your name. I worship and just want to tell you, just want to tell you, Lord, I love you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Hey, hey, I say, I love you, I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore your name. I love 
Good morning, church. I will be reading to you Psalms 91 in its entirety. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall, make, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways, in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the against stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. That's the end of the reading of his word. Thanks, Kevin. Appreciate that. <clears throat> Well, um, it's an honor to be here once again. I don't know how, um, after every time I preach, how I get to get back in again. I think it's because Pastor Copeland continually thinks, well, maybe if I give him one more chance, maybe he'll be able to figure it out next time, right? But seriously, Pastor Copeland, appreciate your ministry to me alone so much. I appreciate New Zion, I appreciate you so much. It's such an honor to stand up here. Um, well, we're in Psalm 91 today. If you have your Bible, keep it open there. Um, what I want to talk about today is all around the idea of refuge. And the big question is, are you in good hands? Are you in good hands? Do you have a comprehensive coverage plan in your name? So, I don't know if you know this, but the insurance uh, industry is a $30 billion industry in the U.S. alone. That's billion with a B. The security industry, security services, is a $48 billion industry. The healthcare industry blows both of these out of the water, though. $40.3 trillion. I'm pretty sure half of that is from my, me and my headaches, but we see that uh, no matter who you are, no matter where you are, we all need three things, food, water, and shelter. We all need a place of refuge. And when things come in life, I've kind of realize that there are two types of people. Like whenever a problem presents itself, whenever a storm of life kind of billows o over you, I've realized that there's two general ways of responding. And of course, one is the way I respond and the other is the way Ellie, my wife, responds. I'm not saying either of them is better. But without naming any names, one of us, when, like let's take for instance, a couple weeks ago, whenever the storm was coming through, the tornado warning that turns to a tornado watch, one of us said, it's going to be us. 
It's going to be us. Our house is going to get taken out. We've got to get to the basement. And then the other one of us said, ah, we'll be fine. It's not us. We're not special. We're not the 1% that get, that's going to get affected by that. And so we, we, we may have very different ways of responding to issues, to, res, to responding to problems. But the reality is, is that it doesn't matter if you think you need refuge or not. It doesn't matter if you think you need all the refuge in the world. The reality is, is that storms come for everyone. For everyone. Everyone in this building has been affected by some sort of physical storm, emotional storm, health storm, any type of issue we need help with. So my question is, is, are you in good hands? Are you in good hands? Because he who takes shelter in God will live safely with God. Now, this is, this, this is the whole point of the sermon right here. Go ahead and write it down. Remember it. He who takes shelter in God will live safely with God. So where do you take refuge? Are you in good hands? So we see, uh, we're going to see what, we're going to see the psalmist talk about my refuge, your refuge, and God's salvation. My refuge, your refuge, and God's salvation. So let's start first with my refuge. The psalmist opens the psalm with talking about his refuge. Verses 1 and 2. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. The psalmist is telling you right from the outset, you need refuge, and I've found my refuge. I know where I'm going when the storm hits. I've got a basement I can retreat to. I've got an insurance policy for whenever unexpected things of life happen. I've got a refuge. And who is the refuge? We see that it's the the Most High, the Almighty, the Lord. Notice those words. You know how names convey meaning and, you know, you use different names for different times? I don't know if... Any of y'all get called by your full name sometimes when, and usually when it's Brian Allen hers, well, that usually means you're in trouble, right? But if you hear, hey, Brian, then you know that's probably someone who's known you for a long time and thinks they can call you by a nickname. They feel comfortable with you. So what do these names that the psalmist is choosing to use here mean about God? Well, we see that he's choosing to the words most high, meaning that he's higher than anything we see that he's talking about the almighty meaning that he's greater than anything and we see that he's the lord like he is lord over everything that nothing is out of his dominion and control what he's saying is that god is a comprehensive coverage for him that he's greater than anything and that that is the only thing in which he can do what look at your bible verse two trust isn't it interesting? We, you don't have to do anything. He does, he's not saying that he is doing anything but one thing, and that is trusting the right person. So the question is, is do you trust him? Are you dwelling in the shelter of the Most High? Because that's what the psalmist is saying. He's essentially starting out the psalm saying, let me brag on my shelter. I don't know if, uh, if you've ever seen, there's an old show that used to be on this Discovery Channel called Doomsday Preppers. I don't know if any of y'all seen it. A bunch of crazy people who, you know, think the world's about to end. And, uh, you know, they all have different ideas of how, the different ways that the world is going to end. Some think it's going to be through, like, a nuclear uh, war gone out of hand. Some of it thinks that a virus is going to spread across the whole world. It doesn't matter. They all disagree on how the world's going to end, but they all agree on one thing, that the world's going to end and that they've got to prepare for it right now. And yet they all take shelter. They all build these refuges that they can take shelter in. And they have one other thing in common. It's that they're pretty proud of their shelters. (laughs) That's what the whole show is based off is, let me brag about my shelter. 
Look at how I can distill water down if there's any water. I can condense water out of the air. I can make food. I have food set aside for years and years. And they're all taking refuge. That is their shelter. That is their hope. I'm curious what your refuge is. I mean, I don't know. If any of y'all have a, a doomsday shelter called a 401k maybe? I mean, I know we're, some of us are pretty proud of that 401k or that Roth IRA maybe. Maybe you got one of each and you got another one too that I don't even know about. But maybe, maybe that's not your cup of tea. Maybe, you know, you're like, I, I'm going to work until I die. You know, I'm, I know we've got some of those in here. Maybe your family's your refuge. Where do you, the, I think the biggest way, the most helpful way to identify your refuge is where do you go when everything hits the fan? Where do you go? You call mama? You call dad? I mean, anytime I have a leak in my basement, which seems like it's continuous, um, I'm always calling my dad, dad, what do I do? How do I fix this? So the question is, is, who is your refuge? And more importantly, once you've identified who is your refuge, how great is your refuge? How comprehensive is your refuge? And that's where the psalmist goes to try to sell you on God a little bit. He says, let me tell you how he can be your refuge. Let me sell him a little bit. I've talked about how he's my refuge, but let's talk about how he can be your refuge. Verses 3 through 13. He lists the whole, the whole, all the verses, 13, 3 through 13, lists a whole bunch of different ways that God's a refuge, that God can be your refuge. The psalmist is trying to tell you what God can do for you. So he starts out saying that he's a deliverer from traps. Notice that verse 3, he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler, But not only does he deliver you from traps, but he he delivers you from the deadly pestilence. You know, pest, mites, uh, famines. And we see here that he is a deliverer, that he saves from things. That he keeps watch over his people. And so here we see that he's a a preemptive Guard, but notice that he is also not just tough, but also tender in his refuge for you. He will cover you with his pinions. Now, what's what's a pinion? I, I'm not very familiar with that word. I had to Google it. A pinion is a is the flight wings of a bird. And so, as he continues on later in verse, um, Okay, I'm, <laughs> um, yeah, verse, okay, so here we are in verse 4, and then you go right down below. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will actually find refuge. This is the image that we're, you're probably about to see all over town here in just a couple weeks. This is one of my favorite times of the year because spring is the typical, typically the mating season for most animals. And so you're about to start seeing little turkey poults, you know, everywhere. I don't know if you've been to Blaine's or Tractor Supply lately, but they got all the little chicks in the little boxes, you know, because it's that time of year. And that's the image that God is conveying here, that the psalmist is conveying here, that God is an active shelter in that he puts his wing over and tenderly protects his tender young, just like a a duck would do for a duckling, just like a hen would do for her chicks. He goes on to say that he is also like a shield and a buckler, meaning that he is a, he's a shield. He's, he's, a, a, he's a impenetrable, immovable shield, but he's also a swift, swift and active mobile shield. That's what a buckler is. And here, I think we've all known verse 5 for a long time. You will not fear the terror of the night nor the arrow that flies by day. I think we have a saying here at New Zion that says, that God protects us not only from the bullet by day, but the virus by night. It's the same thing that he's talking about here. 
And so he continues and he goes on throughout all the way to verse 13 of how everyone will fall by your side, but yet the person who trusts in God will have security. Though thousands may be falling at your side. I don't know if you ever look up and look around and it seems like everyone is falling, like everyone is sick, everyone is experiencing hurt, and you're just wondering, when, when's my number again called next? How much longer do I have at delaying the inevitable? We all know that this is go, that we are going to need shelter, that we are going to need refuge at some point. And we may be seeing it happen all around us. I mean, I got on the news this morning just to check, to make sure that all of life's problems hadn't, hadn't been saved. So I checked Fox News first. No, nope, there's still problems. Something about, you know, sexuality this and liberal that, you know. And so I thought, well, surely, you know, someone else has, you know, more positive outlook. So I went to, I, I went to CNN. You know, I thought, surely they're going to tell me that there's, there's not, you know, really we're finally getting around to where there's not any, any too big of problems. Checked on CNN this morning, Bed Bath & Beyond's going out of business. How the mighty fall. We can't, we just can't get away from it. So, you know, I thought, Brian, this is so silly, you know. Like, why am I wasting my time with secular people? You know, of course they don't, they don't know God. They don't have any refuge in God. So, you know, I flipped over to the Christian news source. Oh, man, Gospel Coalition, Christianity Day, they both let me down. There's still problems everywhere. There's problems in the church. There's problems in the workplace. There's problems in the home. There's problems in the public square. And so the consensus that I got is that no one is safe from these troubles, and there are people falling all around us. And I'm probably next. You're probably next. Where is your refuge? Where is your shelter? This is a big promise that the Lord gives us. Verse 9. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge, you know, the psalm saying, because you make him your dwelling place, who's also my refuge, no evil will be allowed to befall you. No plague come near your tent. I mean, this just, I don't know if any of y'all are thinking about any of the multiple plagues that are throughout the Bible and how God somehow always sustained his people. Joseph, remember how the whole, how the promised land was in a drought and a famine, and yet God delivered his people to Egypt. And then they get to Egypt a few years later, well, now Egypt's in a drought and a pestilence. And what does God do? God saved his people. Continues on throughout the whole story of Scripture. Elijah has something to do with it. Um, he, he prayed, rain came down. We see that God, somehow, through all of these troubles, doesn't keep the troubles from happening to his people, but he sustains them throughout these problems. No evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague come near your tent. You know, I'm curious if uh, Job read this. Because if anybody had any problem, Job had all of them. And yet, God kept Job. And he lost his whole family. He lost his, all of his animals. He lost all of his people. He lost everything. And yet... The Lord sustained him. The Lord said, Job, you really don't need that Roth IRA, that Roth 40 whatever K. I got you. I'm going to be your retirement. I'm going to be your lasting legacy. And so then it, it goes on to transition here at verse 11 of the way that he actually sustains. Here we have the image of, uh, of like a victory. Verse 11, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Now, I don't know if anybody here 
uh, believes in uh, guardian angels. I'm not going to say whether I think that's a right or wrong notion. I have I have a buddy who, uh, growing up, was convinced that his cat was his guardian angel. I don't think that's what a guardian angel is. I think it's something much greater than that. It's not just a loved one that's watching over you. It's a, It's not just a magic fairy that's going to keep you out of trouble. And a and single angel might be too little because I think what he's saying here is that he will command his angels, plural, concerning you. See, that he gives his messengers to your protection. He will command his angels concerning you to guard over you in all your ways. And yet, not only are they just this active guard protecting you, but notice that they actually, on their hands, they will, verse 12, bear you up. This is the image of, like, after a football game or after a basketball game, whenever the winning team goes and they pick up the person who scored the last basket and they carry them on their shoulders and they carry them out to the locker room. It's a joyful celebration, lifting them up, hoisting them up. That's exactly what the angels are doing here. That is the image of God's protection, is that you are being swept away overwhelmingly by his love and care and protection, that you are treated as the victor over all of the, this destruction around you. His hand, on their hands, they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. He's not even going to let you stub your little pinky toe. That's what he's saying there. He's not even going to let you break a nail. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent. You will trample underfoot. The psalmist is telling me, telling you, let me tell you, I've got to sell you on this refuge. I've got to sell you on this shelter because trouble is coming and you've got to have something. And this is the greatest, most comprehensive coverage that you could get. He's eternal, he's universal, he's comprehensive, he's all-inclusive. And yet, all you have to do is love him. That's all you have to do. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who's my refuge, no evil shall be allowed to befall you. So here he begins to talk about God's salvation. So notice in verse 1, look at verse 1 in your Bible. He begins talking about God, and then he says something in his own voice. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. And then he begins to be directed at you and tell you how God can save you and how you can actually be the subject of that provision. But here in verse 14, the voice changes. I don't know if you see, if, you, if your Bible has quotation marks there around verses 14 through 16. That's because he's actually saying, look, I've tried to sell you the best I can. I've showed you my shelter. I've told you what he does for me, what he can do for you. But let me just step out of the way and let God himself sell you. Let me just let God tell you. Let me let God speak. And what does God say? Because he holds fast to me in love. I will deliver him. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. Notice all these I will statements that he does. He will deliver him. He will protect him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. These are, this is the whole look of God's, the whole spectrum of God's coverage, of God's salvation. That's what, you know, that's what salvation means, is to be saved from something, to be rescued from something, to be delivered from something, to be satisfied in something. That is God's salvation. That's, that's the whole thing that he's laying out here. He will deliver him, meaning that, He will take him out of the trouble that he's found himself in. He will protect him. He is actually going to guard him from trouble. When he calls me, he will answer. 
God will not just be the passive protective, but he's not going to be like one of the queen's guards who don't say anything, don't look anywhere, but are always on guard. In fact, he's actually got, he's got a direct line to you. And he'll answer any time you call. I, he, he says, I will be with him in trouble. Not only will he answer your call when you're in trouble, but he will be with you in the midst of your trouble. He will rescue him from the trouble, and he will honor him. I mean, does it get any better? He, he, he get, even gets honored after the trouble, meaning that not only is he with you in trouble, not only does he bring you out of the trouble, but then after that, once you've gotten back to where you were, he takes you even higher than that. He honors you. He brings you up even higher than where, when you were before. I mean, Job can testify to this. For everything that he lost, the Lord brought him back even more. He restored him to an even greater position. And then, not only does he exalt him, but then he gives him something that he couldn't even have himself. Satisfaction. He satisfies you. Not only does he get you through the trouble, not only does he take you to a better place, but then whenever you get to that place, you're in the best place you could be. You're content and satisfied, fat and happy. That is God's salvation. That is the salvation that God is showing to you right now, that God is laying out to you. All because of verse 14. All because he holds fast to me in love. You know, I love Pastor Copeland because he uh, answers my calls. He does. There's a lot of times I'm calling him, Pastor, I've got a problem. My basement's leaking. My wife's pregnant. We've, we don't know how we're going to make it. Pastor Copeland's always there with me. He, gives me the right, he always has the right thing to say. He always has a prayer for me. But the problem is, is that Ash Copeland's a man. You know, my parents are the same way. I can always call my parents. Anytime I have an issue with the house, the basement's flooding, the roof is flying off because of the tornadoes that pass through, I can call my dad, and he always answers. He'll talk to me sometimes longer than I want him to about these issues. He's going to tell me, Brian, I, I can tell you exactly how you need to fix this. You need to go get some shingles. There's these special type of roofing nails you got to get. And then you got to get up on the roof. You got to make sure you tuck it in under there. I'm like, all right, all right, Dad. I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. But the problem is, is that my dad is over a 1,000 miles away. He's limited in his help. You know, I love Ellie because the greatest thing about marriage, well, let me back up. Before I, the greatest thing about marriage is that she's there with me through everything. We were dating, and uh, pretty soon after we started dating, like within a, co- a week or so, um, uh, my parents got uh, COVID, and so I couldn't go home for Thanksgiving. My mom and dad said, don't go, come home for Thanksgiving. So I thought, great, I'm going to get to do a lot, a lot of duck hunting. But I was on speakerphone. My parents were on speakerphones, and Ellie happened to be sitting right there. And so Ellie looks at me, and she says, you want to come to Thanksgiving with my family? I was like, oh, Man, I don't know if I'm ready to meet the whole family, you know. And I feel like I'm going to be without any shelter or refuge there, you know. But I, I, I relented, and we went. We had, you know, okay time. They felt like they had to run me through the ringer a little bit, and I love them for that. I, I could tell that they loved their girl. And at the end of this week, we were honestly kind of on rocky grounds. We didn't know if we were going to make it or not. I mean, we'd only been dating a couple weeks. Um, and they thought we might have been moving a little fast. Ellie was starting to get a little scared. I was starting to question things. But then we had the problem of all problems. We have three dogs between the two of us, and one of them decided to throw up in the back seat of my truck. And it was in that moment when I'm standing in the pouring rain with nothing to clean somehow, and pull, pulled into a gas station. We're cleaning up this throw-up in the back of my truck. It smells. We're wet. We stink. We're both mad at each other. And I looked up at Ellie, and she smiled back at me. 
because she was right there with me in the trouble. It was at that moment I said, I don't know what just happened this whole weekend, but I'm going to make this work because I need someone to be with me in times of trouble. Problem is, is Ellie can't always rescue me. Rescue, Ellie's right there. She, she'll always answer my call. She'll always be there with me, but she can't always deliver me from this trouble. You know, we can look at all these places that we find refuge, that we find, you know, um, help from. But all of them are limited in some aspect. They're all good. These are all great things. 401K is a great thing to have. You got to save something. I mean, we talk about that every week. You got to save something. But that can't be your bottom line. That can't be where you go in times of trouble. We also, have to, we also have to be rescued out of this trouble. We've got to be returned to where we are. And then only God can honor us and satisfy us as much as we need. So my question today is, is do you love him? Where do you take refuge? Are you in good hands? You know, um, I said, you know, this time of year is my favorite time of year. I love ducks. We are uh, using ducks as our uh, kind of a little bit of nursery theme that we've got going on for May that's coming. And um, the cool thing about ducks is that <clears throat> they're one of the only animals that um, parent in the way that they do. You see, mother ducks, hens, love their little ducklings. They lead them everywhere. You know, I don't know if you've ever seen um, – hen walking across the road and there's a string of ducklings following her you know and so uh one time we uh, a year ago about this time we were in madison we were there our, our uh, anniversary trip and we were sitting eating some cookies in a park and it was right next to one of the lakes in madison and uh there were some ducks and ducklings and they start waddling on the shore. They start picking in the grass and eating all these bugs and everything. We're just watching them. We just think they're the cutest little things and everything. And then all, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the hen abandons her ducklings. She starts squalling and quacking. The ducklings go one way. The hen goes another way. And what we realize is that there was a cat that was sneaking in on the ducklings. And so what the hen did is she acted like she had broken wings and that she couldn't hardly go anywhere. And so she goes flying off to the side, stumbling, quacking, drawing attention to her to save her ducklings. And what a beautiful picture of the gospel that is. You know, the thing, the wild thing about God is that when he came the first time, he actually came, you know, they were expecting a mighty warrior to come, a politician, a military leader, someone with force and might to come to rescue them, to be their refuge. But what they got was this tender lamb, the spotless lamb that actually had to die the death that they couldn't die. So the last thing I have to tell you is sometimes God's refuge is unorthodox. I mean, we... While we're sitting here, we're listening, we're thinking of all of our problems that we got going. We're as soon as we're thinking about all those problems, we've got all of the solutions of the way that we know God's gonna answer them, right? But we've got to be careful with our expectations because as we see with Job, as we see with the gospels, God works in unorthodox ways. Just like a hen sacrifices herself, so Christ sacrificed himself. Greater love has no one than this, than someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. That's what Jesus says in John 15. But, while he does come in unorthodox ways sometimes, Jesus is coming again. The first time he came as a tender, meek, mild lamb, spotless to take away our sins, to be our sacrifice. But the second time he comes, I don't know if you've read Revelation, but I can tell you what the whole book's about 
in one short sense is that God wins. God comes back as a mighty warrior riding in a chariot, being pulled by horses, flames and fire. I mean, it is a spectacular sight. He's bringing with him hosts of armies. He's the Lord of hosts, meaning that he's the commander of legions of people. That's the way he's coming back. So the question is, is do you love him? Are you in good hands? He who takes shelter with God will live safely with God for forever. So my call to you today is if you're a Christian, are you taking refuge in God? Anytime issues come up, is, are you turning back to God for help? Or are you trying to find your own means? If you're not a Christian, maybe you're tired of trying to find your own means. Maybe you're tired of not having answers or security, and you just want to be satisfied. That's exactly what Christ is offering today. That's exactly what God is offering t- today. And the entry fee is low. He's just asking that you love him, that you stick close to him. You know, my mom has a dog uh, named Shadow. We changed her name because she uh, had a weird name that she got adopted with. But Shadow, we didn't know it was going to be the most fitting and appropriate name. We named her Shadow because she's all black. But it's even more fitting because anytime my mom goes anywhere, Shadow is right there in her shadow. Are you dwelling in the shadow of God? Are you sticking close to God? Because wherever God's shadow is, he is also there. And he is a present help in times of trouble and need. Would you pray with me? Lord, we thank you for your comprehensive coverage, for your universal, eternal help that you are. You are a present help to us in times of need. You are an active watchman for us. You are our rescuer. You are our deliverer. You are our honoree. You honor us. You satisfy us with refuge and with strength to endure, Lord. We pray that if anyone here doesn't know you in a personal way, that they would find you as their shelter. Lord, while we were in the basement, We may have been in the basement, but our shelter was in you, Lord. May we all find our shelter in you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Without further dialogue, debate, or discussion, you've heard the question, and the question is, do you love him? Here's what's at stake in that. The Bible says for we know that all things work together for good. Those who are the called according to his purpose are those who love him. So if you're here today and you need to make a first-time commitment to Christ or you're watching online and you want to put your trust in him, we want to extend that invitation for you here today. Secondly, if you're already here, you're already a Christian, but you have been shelterless. Do you know that The church is one of God's shelters. Church is God's refuge. It's the place where we have community. It's a place where no one is perfect. I'm not a perfect pastor. We don't have any perfect people here. But we might be the perfect shelter for you simply because there's some bad times that each one of us are going through, and we need a community. We need a place where people will pray for us. We need a place where we can run to and find good news for these bad times. If you're here and you're looking for a church home, we'd invite you to join in with us. And then finally, if you're here, you're already a Christian, already active in the church you attend, whether it be this one or the one you normally attend, but you know for a fact you've been trusting in the wrong things. You know that we have a lot of myths as it relates to uh, what to do when the storm happens. Did you grow up with this? When storms are raging, you better, I don't know, some of the stuff they used to say, the devil is beating his wife. I don't know. I don't know how the devil got a wife, but anyway, we would, (laughs) yeah, 
You got to be quiet because God is working. Get off that phone. <laughs> we might get electrocuted. <laughs> we had all kind of stuff as it relates to storms, depending on where you grew up. But here's the truth of the matter is that you need a refuge. And thanks be to God, we have heard today that the Most High, the Almighty, the Lord of everything can be your refuge. He's eternal, he's universal, and he's comprehensive. And so if you're here today, without further dialogue, debate, or discussion, members of New Zion are going to help me extend this invitation in a more personal way. Ask the people in front of you, behind you, do you need a refuge today? Open up your mouth and ask them directly. And if you're watching on us, watching online, if you need a refuge, just reach out in the comment section and we'll be happy to communicate with you. And if you're ready to join church today or ready to make a first-time commitment to Christ, just raise your hand right where you are. We'll have a commitment coach come and pray with you and pray for you. If you need to make a commitment, first-time commitment, or you're ready to join church, just raise your hand right where you are and let somebody come and pray with you and pray for you. We have commitment coaches that will come and answer whatever questions that you might have. If you're reaching out in the comment section, just reach out and give us some information and we'll be happy to reach out to you. If everything is all right with you and God, then why don't you give the Lord a hand clap of praise and let's thank God for being a refuge in the time of storm. He's a refuge and he will either rescue you from the thing or get in the thing with you. Either way, you're going to be all right. How many of you know the Lord is near the brokenhearted? And he's close to those who are crushed in spirit. That even if the storm is an internal storm, God will get in that thing with you. Thank you, Minister Brian Hurst, for blessing us today, for challenging us through the word of God. So here's what we want you to do. We want you this week as you continue to meditate and go back over that scripture yourself. I want you to ask the people in your life, what are you depending on? What are you trusting in to be your ultimate source of security? Ask somebody that question today. What are you, what are you using for your refuge? And find out from them exactly what they're trusting in in times of storm. It's good to have insurance. Let me say this. Uh, it's good to have insurance and assurance. I'm asking the people of God to get both. Some of us have insurance, but we ain't got no assurance. Some of us have assurance, and you ain't got no insurance. I need you to get both. Yeah, he'll be with you, but you need some insurance too. I'm talking about life insurance. We ain't taking up no more GoFundMe pages to get you buried, and you know that you need insurance. So let's take care of business on both ends. We're going to prepare our hearts uh, now to give as we get ready to go. Uh, there are many different ways that we can worship God in our giving. Uh, there are receptacles at the back of the sanctuary if you want to give by check or by cash, or you can give electronically through all the mobile apps uh, that we have. But here's, uh, turn that back, I'm sorry, one more time. The purpose of tithing, this is Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 23. The purpose of tithing is to teach you always to put God first in your lives. That God, if he's your refuge, then you ought to honor God with the first fruits of all your increase. Tithing, that principle of giving God the first, the top, the best 10% of whatever he provides for you is a way to teach you to put him first and to trust in him. Because if you recognize that your job, your 401k and all these other things are just resources, but God is the source, then you'll know that if you seek him first, and his kingdom, he'll make sure you have everything you need. So there are various, main, various means by which you can give, Cash App, New Zion, or the website, all those types of things. If you're going to give uh, electronically or by your mobile phone, go ahead and pull that out and pull your phone out now and go ahead and give while we're talking. And then we're going to hear our ministry highlights as we get ready to go. Good morning, New Zion. Let's settle in and pay attention to our weekly ministry highlights. Again, if you have an announcement, please send all pertinent information to nzannouncements at gmail.com. The deadline is the Wednesday prior to the Sunday you would like to have it announced. 
If there are any New Zion High School or College 2023 graduates, please call the church office at 815-964-3114 and leave a message with your name and the school you are graduating from so that we can celebrate you. On Sunday, April 23rd, Dr. Copeland will be preaching at Emmanuel Baptist Church in Beloit for their 106th church anniversary celebration, and the music ministry will be on program as well. We are also invited to fellowship with them between 1 and 2.30 p.m. at the Dr. Floyd Crew Jr. Family Life Center for dinner. The address is 1151 East Grand Avenue in Beloit, Wisconsin. On Sunday, April 30th, the New Zion Garden Ministry will be meeting immediately after the worship service in the rear of the sanctuary. All those who are interested, please make plans to attend. Please join the All of Me Mental Health Ministry on May 18th at 6 p.m. as Reverend Kevin Thomas presents Caring for Your Trauma. The meeting ID and passcode for the Zoom is on the screen. On May 20th, Mentality Unchained presents the second annual Mental Health Forum, The Family Reunion, with Dr. Kevin Thomas. It will be held at the Nordloff Center from 9.30 a.m. to 1 o'clock p.m. with a meet and greet beginning at 9 a.m. Along with Dr. Kevin Thomas, there will be a plethora of knowledgeable panelists, a special guest, as well as a musical guest. Again, this is open to the public. We all know babies are a blessing from God. Help us celebrate as the hers are expecting a little cowgirl. On May 21st, New Zion will be honoring mother-to-be Ellie Hers with a baby shower here at the church. It will be from 11.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. Please RSVP by May 17th if you plan to attend at 815-975-1015. Again, it's 815-975-1015. Cash and gift cards are recommended. Here is our mental health tip of the week brought to us by the All of Me Mental Health Ministry. Let's take time and read it together aloud. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Psalm 73, 26. This concludes our weekly ministry highlights. Have a blessed week. As we get ready to go, please remember uh, today, 1151 Grand in Beloit, Wisconsin, will be the Manuel Baptist Church um, for their 106th anniversary. They'll be feeding us starting at 1 o'clock, so we will not have a meal here today after worship because we'll be eating up there. So please make your way up there uh, to help us to celebrate that great church. Uh, Emmanuel was the church that we had sent um, Minister Rodney Hayes uh, for a season uh, to be an interim there before God called him to Jerusalem Baptist Church. And so we want to go and celebrate their pastor there. Also, remember, it was not in the announcements, but on May the 5th, we're planning a family night here at the church. May the 5th, that's that first Friday in May. Write that down in your calendars. You'll be getting more information about that here tomorrow, actually, and Tuesday. So pay attention to your email and look at the Facebook page. Let's all stand now as we get ready to go. The Lord is our refuge and a very present help in the time of trouble. So rely on him this week. Remember that you have comprehensive coverage. And don't forget to ask somebody else, what are you, what are you trusting in? What are you depending upon to be your source of security when things get tough and see what they have to say about that. Let me pray for you as we get ready to go. Thank you again, Minister Brian. Encourage him after service and let him know how you were blessed by the sermon. Every head bowed. Great God, our Father, you are our refuge. You're the almighty one, the most high God that we can depend on and hide in. Your name is a strong tower we can run to and we can be safe. 
thank you for how you've kept us up to this point. Now we need you this week. We're praying on our job and our homes and our health and our finances that you will continue to show yourself strong and mighty on our behalf. Put a bubble of protection around every household represented here. Keep us safe from the bullet by day and the virus by night. We ask that you would watch over our children as they go to and fro to school and Watch over our elders, our senior saints. Help those who are hurting and make us blessings one to another. And so now we commit ourselves unto you, the one who's able to keep us from falling and able to present us faultless before your presence with exceeding joy. To you, the only wise God, do we ascribe glory, honor, and power henceforth now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you and have a great day.